Hey and welcome. Here is a quick guide showing you how you can use our uncategorized transactions template to quickly get context on transactions that needs to be categorized into the right categories on your accounts. Here's how to use it. Open this template and go to file and click on make a copy. Save a copy to your own Google Drive so that you can start to pull in your own data to get this set up for you. Setting this up is really easy, so let's just get to it. So first, what you'll do is go to extensions and then open LiveFlow and click on get started. This will allow you to pull in your own version of this uncategorized transactions. So if you haven't done this already, go and install LiveFlow and connect to the QuickBooks account for where you would like to pull in the data. Select the given company and then choose the transaction detail report. It's up to you for which date range you would like this to be. But for this reason, we will, or for this purposes, we'll just choose for the whole year. Select that and then select group by account and then go here and click on show filters. Filter by an account and then here filter it by your uncategorized expenses, uncategorized income. Maybe, maybe you call it ask my accountant. That's also fine. Just make sure that that's selected and the given account that you want to filter it by selected. Then what you'll do is click on create a live report. And then what will happen is we will now go and get you that those exact transactions from your QuickBooks account. So those came in right here. So we can minimize this and move it over here for now. So now we have a transaction detail list here which is essentially the equivalent of the test data that we have in here. So now what we want to do is we want to copy these two columns here because we want to bring them over to your new dashboard. And then depending on how, of course, you would like to set this up, this is more or less up to you, but just you can add them here as additional columns, make them a little bit bigger. And if there are any of these that you don't want to see, you can, of course, just hide them uh, to make life a little bit more simple. And we can also just hide these for now because we don't want to see them for now. Cool. So once we have that, the next step is we want to import an account list report. So again, go back and open LiveFlow, click on create report and click on specify an account list. And this time around, we don't need to add any filters. We can just click on create live report straight away. And this will then import your all of your chart of accounts into Google Sheets. Cool. So once we have that, we can safely go ahead and delete this account list because that's just the test data. We won't need that. You can also rename these sheets to exactly what you want. So if you want to say account list, uh, my company, whatever your company name is, they can totally do that. Then what we want to do is we want to go into the mapping tab here. And now you see that there is no data coming in here because we've just deleted all the underlying data. So what we just want to do is you want to copy the name of this new account list that we just imported paste that into cell B1 here and then click enter. And then you'll see that we now get you all of your accounts and their respective numbers listed up here. If you see that some of them don't have any number, then this would be fixed if you go back to your QuickBooks account and add the relevant account numbers. Because as you can see here, there's some of our numbers that lack uh, that lack numbers on the account. So if we just for test purposes add a random number here, say 2000 on our accounts receivables, You'll see that it will appear up here in our in our accounts list uh, over here. But we generally recommend that you do this in your QuickBooks because when this gets refreshed, this would then be overwritten back to to no numbers. So do this in QuickBooks. Cool. So now there's just a few steps left. So go back to the uh, the template here, and now all you can do is you can just copy a few of these. And so copy these, and then go back to your new transaction detail, and then paste them in here, and then what you'll see now is that the names of these accounts that are now appearing should now be the equivalent to the to the accounts that you have over in your mapping chart here. So the ones that are coming up, 1000 cash on hand, 1000 uh, one cash on hand one should now appear here. So we can just have a double check and we see that those are all correct. We have the accounts receivable, we have the inventory asset, et cetera, exactly as they're listed here. So now just copy and paste these down. And here you can ask your clients or your team members, whoever needs to give context on these transactions to add some comments here. So this was for XXX or set, set, set. Cool. So this is all pretty straightforward. Now, what you can do, you can go ahead and delete this sheet because you don't need that anymore. Now you have your own new live dashboard here. You can also delete the, the, uh, the guidance here if you don't need that, of course. Uh, but this is all set up and ready to go. Now, the 
a, a few quick tips on this you may want to consider as you are using this workflow, either for your clients or for internal team members, is when when someone adds a comment to this uh, to this row, and you now go back and categorize this row, what will happen is that this will get deleted. So essentially, things here will move up, but the comment will stay. Um, and that's can, that can create a little bit of problems, a little bit of friction, because obviously this comment is not necessary now for this new transaction. So if we just revert that back, what we, what we recommend that you try out is you go to manage reports and then disable the auto refresh in this case. So you can just say completely disable it. And that way things won't automatically refresh and it will stay intact. So if you import this to say by month end and you need your team or your clients to fill out uh, fill out the given transactions, then you can send them this over, wait for them to uh, to give the context, go back to QuickBooks and edit, and then come back and and uh, re-enable the auto refresh. So if you just go back here and say every hour, or you can just refresh the report again. So go here and click on refresh, and then all of these will be cleared up, and you can go back for the next month, you can go and import this again. Uh, or just simply click on refresh and you can do the whole thing again. So this is this is really handy. Cool. So if you have any questions or want personal help, then we can always jump on a call with you. We're more than happy to go and help you. Uh, we, we hope you enjoyed the video and let us know how we can improve this template so we can make life easier for you when getting context on transactions. Best of luck.